Mark 10. I just want to give you a little bit of an orientation of how this course is going to be run. So your main page is just this. It's going to be an outline by week. So you can expand or, or collapse each week's information. But in week one, there's going to be a syllabus quiz. There's going to be a calculus review quiz. Um, and you're going to be asked questions about stuff you should know from calculus. So if I click on this quiz, you know, each quiz has a little bit of information about it. You have the points right here. You're told the time limit, and this varies from quiz to quiz, so please pay attention to these fields. You're allowed multiple attempts, and it specifies the attempts here, and you have, it will keep the average score. Okay, so, you know, you are asked to reference uh, the material in f for calculus, so it might be useful to have your calculus textbook in front of you when taking this quiz. But if I was to preview it, you know, it asks you some questions about series right here. Question three asks you more some more questions about series. Uh, question 12 asks you to determine the maximum of a function on an interval. So various questions like this. Okay, another uh, that's the same question. My apologies. Question 19, for instance asks you to calculate the derivative at a point, and you need to select one of these. Okay. I want to tell you that these questions are mainly a single selection. There are some multiple selection problems in this course. Um, you should also know that if you select an incorrect answer on a multiple selection uh, problem, that is worth negative points. Okay. So you mark one correct and one incorrect answer on a multiple selection, you wind up with zero points. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is what you have to do in week one, or take these two quizzes. In week two, it's with uh, it's with this outcome right here. It's with this quiz. If you click on this quiz. It tells you the points, it tells you all those same fields, um, and it tells you which chapter to read. So read chapter one, then you can take this quiz. Okay, And here it has the corresponding video lecture okay, and some optional textbook problems. And then you'll preview it, and you're asked some questions on counting okay, and perhaps some basic probability questions. So um, various things about how many ways things can happen. This question at the very end is asking for you the pro asking you for the probability the sum of the face value sums to eight. And here's it here's a, a diagram of all possible outcomes when you toss two dice, and that's called the sample space. Okay. So each week you're going to have a quiz like that. In week three, you won't see these things because they're not in the course. They're things that I'm playing with and experimenting with. In week three, you'll have something very similar. Okay, So it tells you what to read, and then it gives you two lectures. Here's uh, lecture one, here's lecture two, and here's some optional problems. And then we can preview this, and here's some of the questions. So events A and B are disjoint. Use the definition of independence to select the correct answer. So it's asking is it dependent or independent? Okay. Here's a question about tossing coins. What's the probability of exactly two heads? Um, here's another probability questions and it continues like this. Okay. So as there is a syllabus quiz Let's head towards going over the syllabus. Okay, so keep in mind you're allowed two attempts for this, and there's no time limit. So your syllabus quiz looks like this. It asks you for information about your textbook. It asks you questions about email correspondence. It asks you uh, which of the following applies when contacting your constructor. 
Um, it asks you questions about exams. It asks you about who your instructor is, questions about technology, and questions about late penalties and homework. Okay, so let's go to your syllabus, because you can have this open while you're taking the quiz. So just some basic information here. Um, I want to hit on this template for email correspondence. First, please take a picture or a screenshot of the question you're having issues with. That's essential for me to be able to identify the question and make sure we're on the same page. Okay. I also want to emphasize that you should include Math 3410 in the subject line so that I know what course it is. And you should include your name in somewhere in the email. Um, you should discuss issues that you had with the problem generally in the email, just so I know how to better help you. Okay. This is the course coverage, okay, and it corresponds to these chapters. Okay. Everyone here should have a grade of C or better in Math 1220, okay, and in terms of grading, your grade is weighted as follows, with 30% on homework, 15% for each of the three exams, and then a final exam. I should note that there's a review for each of the exams, but not the final exam. Okay. Now all exams are going to be through Canvas, and you have multiple dates to take them, as outlined here. Um, you have your final exam December 13th through 14th, um, and just as I stated, there will be a review provided for each exam, but not the final exam. Okay. Um, your final letter grade is determined as your overall percentage with these corresponding categories. Okay. Um, so that's a basic overview of this course. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I just want to say welcome to Math 3410 again, and I'm grateful to have you. Thank you.